listeners can hear both of you. So you also brought your barista, Joanne, who I definitely have tried one of her lattes as well. So it's amazing. Um, welcome to the show. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started in the, because you are like well versed in the culinary world. I saw your resume. You know, you started out um, in like learning in the Culinary Institute of America and moved under like some well-known restaurants that are in your area. So why don't you tell us a little bit of the, your history? I actually started uh, Le Cordon Bleu first, like doing culinary in the beginning. Uh, in the beginning, actually, uh, it wasn't planned. I was trying to be a rebel with my family because they wanted me to go to business school. But I'm like, I'm going to do something different, something that I want to try. So I ended up going to Le Cordon Bleu in uh, California for one and a half years. I did my associate in culinary. And then after that, I'm like, oh, I kind of want to try something different also. And then that's when I went to CIA in New York to do my pastry. Ever since then, I'm like, oh, this is actually so much more fun. Like, uh, and then I decided uh, I want to go around the States to kind of learn from different chefs. My very first internship was at Qua with uh, Chef Nick Munsi. It's one of the best pastry chef I think out there that like I'm I, I'm really grateful I got the chance to learn from him and then I move on to Blue Hill for about a year or so I was working with the chef there also Chef Bobby <laughs> yeah, he actually opened his own bakery also in Chicago oh, yes nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting and then after that after I get some more exposure I decided I want to do something different again and I moved to Boston to work at this encounter there was this uh, couple that uh, uh, owned the restaurant. It's a very small tasting menu restaurant. I started that actually as just a uh, just helping out. I was I was bored. I don't I don't really want to do anything specific at the moment. So I was just helping them out, and then they promoted me to the pastry chef when the pastry chef left. And then after that, we were just kind of hanging out. Uh, I was there for three years or so, mm -hmm. and towards the last year, our CDC left. And I actually step in to kind of manage a t uh, help out, like manage a team while while he was gone. And after that, here we are in Poughkeepsie. We're opening in our own bakery with my husband. Yeah. Now, <laughs> along the way, when did the two of you meet? Um, because I obviously there's an influence um, on both your parts mm -hmm. for Kelly's Bakery, um, which for our listeners and for everybody who's watching on Facebook Live right now. I love the fact that you're you named your bakery after your dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like uh, back at school, they always have this project of like designing, I'm um, like planning uh, your future restaurant or something like that. We like when I look back on all of the stuff that I make, I'm like, oh my god, all of these names are so lame. I'm like, what was I even thinking at school? And then we were just like, I don't even know what to name, and I just like. Oh. What do you think? Like, Kelly's Bakery sounds cute. And then I'm like, and then we just look at our dog. Like, at first we were like, oh, people's going to think we're like an Irish pup or something like that because of like <laughs> Kelly's. I'm like, uh, and then he, I, he thought I was kidding at first. He was just like laughing and just like smirking. I'm like, yeah. and then I'm, I'm the type of person if somebody smirk at my idea, I'm just like, I'm, I'm going to do it instead. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I have to say when, when I did enter, I was like looking for a Kelly I, like, when I entered and I was like, oh no, that's not the owner. So it was like, my brain was like, but I love, I mean, I love animals. So it's, it's a cute idea. And I love that. When did you guys meet and you know, how did you get acclimated to the culinary world? We actually met when I was in school, right? Yeah, but just, just before you graduate. Yeah, just before uh, I graduate my social degree when I start my bachelor at CIA. We met there and then we did a little bit long distance when I was uh, going uh, to farm to table program CIA in uh, California, in Napa Valley. Mm -hmm. I was there about six months and then I came back. Then we decided to move, uh, that's after that, after I graduate bachelor, I go to Blue Hill and then Boston after that together with him. Aww. <laughs> And then move back here or to Poughkeepsie. The plan was always to come back to Poughkeepsie and do some and do something in that world. Um, and it's funny that you say acclimated. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily true yet. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know you run front of house with him. 
the funny thing this is actually his very first restaurant experience yeah. like <laughs> he never worked at a restaurant before i know you have more of a financial background right yes 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I have a i do have strong people skills but i don't necessarily have the service delivery but i'm, <laughs> I'm working on it because the personality i guess makes up for it yeah and you did actually you were part of what inspired the whole kelly's bakery thing because of the fact that you were you know playing around in your kitchen i think you know during quarantine and everybody was making bread but you know you have the added benefit of being a chef so you you know take it up a notch but <laughs> but then you came up with the idea of selling it online through ironically facebook, facebook yes yeah. yeah um i would snucky posts you know, this is my day. Help somebody rescue me. <laughs> and people started, um, I need that. I want that. I have to have that. So then it was like, you know, like, let's try this. And we posted a couple loaves of bread. And then the, like, I get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> he was the one that I was pushing. I'm going to tell, like, I'm actually just started doing sourdough about like a year ago and stopped doing pandemic. My background is more like a plate of dessert. So this is what excites me. It's like I'm learning something new every day. I'm actually, during the pandemic when I was studying, I literally call my baker friend. They, they used to be the head baker at Blue Hill. Like literally every day, I'm like, what's wrong with this? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I literally like every day, I'm like, help me. I'm like, he's like my online teacher, pretty much like teaching me how to make bread. Adam Tan. <laughs> yes, <Okay>. correct. <laughs> I did a little bit of research. <laughs> <laughs> been trying to make him I'm like come help me I'm like work here instead it's too bad he lived like a little bit too far like mm -hmm. I would love to bring him because he's like like I, I think he's a I'm, master I think I'm getting there but like he's like on a whole new level I was like if okay if you're saying you think you're getting there like <laughs> I mean you know because you work for them like Absolutely. any any of the breads and the muffins and scones and stuff like that that you offer like I had just your bread, and I swear to God, my family, because I brought it to, to Vermont during Thanksgiving, or not Thanksgiving, I'm um, sorry, the um, Labor Day weekend, yeah. and uh, if everyone went nuts over it. It's the uh, jalapeno and cheddar rustic bread, which I also need <laughs> to bring some again. <laughs> but um, everyone went nuts over it. It's just one loaf of bread, and it's so delicious with the crispy outside, and I, I almost want to grab it like and show people right now, but um, you know, you also brought some banana bread yes. in here for <laughs> nice. us. Um, which I'm excited about. So. I like to eat healthy. <laughs> I like to eat healthy. So it's good you brought banana bread. <laughs> and I mean, okay, so I'm, I like feel like I'm talking for you because <laughs> I'm so excited about your stuff. Um, but like you also want to make everything inclusive and have it be anybody who, you know, has any dietary restrictions, they can walk in and you put a lot yeah. of flavor into your food. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Like a lot of the stuff that we have, I actually don't like eating sweet. Like I, I don't, so anything that we make in the house, like I don't want it to be awfully sweet. Like anything is made from scratch, like our cross. And a lot of people, when they come, it's like, oh, where did you get your pastries? I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, here. I guess like there's so many like uh, bakery these days that they just like get their pastry somewhere else and then they just reheat it. Yeah. Like, basically, I, I had no idea. Sorry. I had no idea that that was a thing. So like when we started open and people started coming in and they hand me like these brochures or pamphlets and I was like, what is this? You know, like, oh, we're a parm-baked distributor. And I just kind of like, you know, in the years that I've been with him, I, ne I never heard of a parm-baked distributor. So it was just like really weird to hear that like people actually buy pre frozen yeah. pre-baked product and sell it. So like when people would come in and ask us, we I think we just had somebody recently um, ask our other counter help, Lori, where do you get your baked goods from? And it's just, it's like, to us, it's like, <laughs> do not smell downstairs? this. <laughs> it's just, like it's it's all done downstairs. Yeah. It's literally there's a full production kitchen, and I still, even all these months in, walk downstairs sometimes. And I'm like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, basically everything is always made fresh there. Even from our pastry to our syrup for the coffees and stuff. Our barista Joe and Brandon, which is actually our two barista at the house, they always make if a uh, lemonade, always free squeeze lemon juice. We any sauce we make is always in the house. We don't 
buy any like pre-made syrups and stuff like that yes we're not gonna uh, like when they come i'm like oh i want hazelnut latte and something we don't have that kind of time because yeah. like <laughs> it's 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 tricky to make those kind of flavors